Hi, I'm Julie, and today we're making uh, Julie's homemade apple pies. I like to use Cortland apples for my pies because they're a little bit harder, and that way your pie doesn't turn into applesauce as you bake it. A little bit less juicy, but it makes up for it in flavor. I cut them, usually I core them with a, with a corer, and then I slice them to the size that I like. It's up to the individual person how you like them. All I put on them is cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg. That's it. And a little bit of instant tapioca to bind them so they won't be watery when you, when you, when you cut them open. It looks crumbly, but that's how I like it because the more you work your crust, the tougher it gets and it'll taste like something you bought out of a grocery store and then there's no reason to do all this extra work because you're not going to have any better of a taste. So what we, all we have to do is uh, put two cups of uh, shortening, no I'm sorry that's wrong, one cup of shortening, two cups of flour, a quarter pinch of salt, and a little bit of water and that's it. That's all it takes to make homemade pie dough. I'm making little pies today so that would be individuals for our customers. That way two people can have a nice hot little apple pie when they come in our dining room for dinner. All you have to do is get a little ball, press it out on a piece of wax paper. You don't need any of that fancy stuff that costs all that money. Just plain old wax paper. This rolling pin's probably older than everybody in your family. It's from my husband's grandmother. This place is a hundred and some years old, so I don't even know how old it is. So anything you have in the kitchen to use is fine. You don't have to buy one of those new ones. This one works just as well as the old as, as the new ones do. As a matter of fact, I think the older ones work better. Just keep spinning and pushing as you're as you're moving it around. You don't have to be afraid of it. You can't hurt anything. Anything you do, you can fix. If it rips, you can fix it. You can't. You just can't be afraid of it when you're doing when you're when you're making food. Done. Okay, we're just going to take a little tiny bowl and take the crust, put it over the top, flip it. If you made it, if it's not perfect, just move it. If it's sticking on the edges, just use your finger to roll it, pull it right off. Then let it drop into the bowl without trying to break it. But if you do break it, all you have to do is fix it with your fingers and it'll be fine. Every time you put apples in a pie, mix all your apples again. Just in case they get a little bit juicy so everything is nice and flavorful. I like to really pile them in there because I don't like to have a big pie crust, just all pie crust. I like apples in my apple pie. Okay, that's one portion. Now we just got to put a top crust on it. Now I'm making the top crust for the pie. You can have to use less than you did before, so it's even faster to do. And if you have two of your pies, you're making a bigger pie, you put two sheets of wax paper together and just go over, go over the top of them with it. Or you can get that really big wax paper, which is even big, better than using these little sheets. do is put this right on top like that over the top of the pie. Just do that if it starts sticking on you. Push that right on. You're going to work from the top, the bottom and roll up. That way you're sealing it as you go. If a little bit of the crust isn't fixed right, just grab a piece out of there and fill it in if you like more crust. That happens when you do things by hand. Nothing's perfect when you do it by hand. And that's what makes it taste so good. Okay, just work it a little bit more just to get it warm. It's a little chilly in here today. I don't have my ovens on yet. Okay, and just push that away from the edge. And then all you have to do is this to make those marks with your fingers. And just keep spinning. Push it in, and then get a fork and put a little, put a couple of vents in it, and there you go, a little baby homemade apple pie. 350 until they're golden brown, and they'll be all done. I made some bigger ones earlier that are still in the ovens and waiting to go in the ovens. That way I have them for the holidays. I'm part cooking them so that I can freeze them. These are going to be cooked all the way, so I just have to heat them for my customers. 
see them come out. These are part cooked apple pies. They're not totally browned. I don't use egg wash on my pies or sugar because I think that there's enough flavor inside them that I don't need that on top. And what I'll do with these is I'll wrap them and foil them and I'll have them for Thanksgiving. I'll have homemade apple pie. Just take them out of there and thaw them out and pop them in the oven for 20 minutes and you have fresh homemade pies all the time in your freezer. Uh, they'll last a good month or two in your freezer. So if you make them now, you can have them right through Christmas. You can have homemade pies right through Christmas. Okay, these are the little pies that we put in. These are, these are going to go pretty fast on 350. They're going to probably be done in about 15 minutes, so about 40, 35, 40 minutes on the little pies. And now these bigger pies I've had on for a while, but these are, these are much bigger. I made a blueberry also. Uh, this apple pie has about 15 more minutes to go. It's been probably in there on 350 for an hour already. If you use a Pyrex uh, pie dish, the glass, clear glass, it's, made, it's like idiot proof. You can see underneath they're starting to turn golden brown. When your pie crust starts turning golden brown, your, your fillings are always done also.